as we gather together apart separated by distance but intertwined in heart you will never leave or forsake reveal yourself afresh to us in unexpected ways come nurture hope in our hurting world today as we gather together again full of unanswered questions deep sadness and lament struggling to know how to pray Mind us of your presence now in unexpected ways. Come nurture hope in our hurting world today. As we gather together anew, may your spirit restore us and draw us close to you. strange stressful days revive our anxious aching hearts in unexpected ways come nurture hope in our hurting world today come nurture hope in our hurting world We come to light our candles. Set our hearts on fire with love for you, O Christ our God, so that in its flame we may love you with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. Chunsum 당신을 사랑하게 하옵소서 주님 우리의 마음과 정성을 다하여 당신을 사랑할 수 있기를 원합니다 그리고 우리 이웃을 우리 자신처럼 사랑하기를 원합니다 아멘 And may we love with all our strength and our neighbours as ourselves 아멘 Gathering. From before recorded time, the first peoples, the first nations cared for this land. We praise the Creator for the beauty of this land and honour those who have offered themselves in tending it. We acknowledge the elders and communities who have told the sacred stories and nurtured faithfulness to the Creator. We ask God's blessing on those who continue to work for the healing and restoration of this land and her communities. So now we come to our time of greeting one another. And in Darug language, we would say, Kui warami mitaga. Come, you are welcome here. 欢迎你们来到这里。你好 안녕하세요. Hello <laughs> Please join me for our call to worship for this week and I invite you to respond in the bold font We search these days for strong armour to defend ourselves against the daily struggles of life 
Yet as we journey, we find God with arms stretched wide in vulnerable hope. We long to be saved from the uncertainty and ambiguity on our journey. Yet as we journey, we see the Christ walking ahead straight into all that we experience. We wait for simple answers to our questions and we receive the call to follow in faith. This is the life of the pilgrim people of God. Let us pray. Come to us, Prince of Peace. We wait here to meet your life so that ours may be guided and guarded by all that you offer us. Equip us now with your courage, wisdom and daring to face all that lies in our journeying. Amen. With the Deaf Community Church, we learn to pass the peace. Thumb and first fingers together in front of us. Peace. Peace to you. Peace to you. Now everyone together. Peace to you. Peace to you. A reading from John, chapter 6, verse 56 to 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. My doctoral supervisor, Roberta King, worked for many years at Daystar University in Nairobi. She told me about a Kenyan proverb. When you pray, always remember to move your feet. What starts in contemplation and spiritual offering has to find its way into the embodied and enacted world. In James, we hear the same sentiment. He emphasises moral action and attention to the social justice issues of the day. Martin Luther considered the focus on good works by James to be an affront to Paul's assertion in Galatians 2 verse 16 that a person is justified not by the works of the law but through faith in Jesus Christ. Luther questioned the letter's apostolic authority and famously referred to it as an epistle of straw. According to Martin Luther, James does nothing more than drive to the law and its works. Besides, he throws things together so chaotically that it seems to me he must have been some good, pious man who took a few sayings from the disciples of the apostles and thus tossed them off on paper. Luther thought about faith and works as separate entities as opposite poles in a binary system. But for James, works arise as a natural outgrowth of genuine faith. 
works tell the tale of whether true faith exists. The works themselves are not separate from faith, but are a part of the whole. Works are acts of living as a community who cares for orphans and widows in distress. James calls us to be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. James's use of the word hearers is an allusion to the Shema, a foundation verse of scripture found in Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. The use of the word Shema carries a second equally emphatic meaning, to obey. When I say, listen to me, I generally also expect people to respond to what I have said. If they fail to act, I might legitimately question whether they have heard. The writer of James keeps the relationship between hearing God's word and doing what the Lord commands. Hearers and doers are the same disciples. The posture of hearing produces obedient action, an experience which in turn opens the faithful person to a deeper relationship with the God who originates every generous act of giving. Hearing God and responding to God's call are bound together for the purpose of providing care for the most vulnerable. Last week in the 8am service we were joined by my friend Anne, Anne who preached for us a couple of weeks ago. She mentioned in our conversation that in the Hawkesbury she has started a prayer fence. A box of ribbons is left out near her fence and people are encouraged to tie a ribbon on the fence as an indicator of someone or something to pray for. Anne and her congregation will pray for all of those who tie a ribbon on the fence. But the conversation didn't stop there. Kath Leal was inspired and decided to pick up the idea to use with Ravenswood School. If you walk past Kath and Mark's home, you will see the ribbons already starting to flutter. Others are picking up the idea too. We can be the visible community of prayer in these isolating and invisible days. Only a couple of decades ago, when people sought a pastoral conversation, there was an understanding. I know what I'm supposed to do in life, but I'm struggling to do it. In the safety and privacy of the pastoral relationship, the pastor or carer was to communicate, in here, there is no right or wrong, only total acceptance and unconditional grace. The hope was that in this non-judgmental environment, the broken places could be healed and people could get back to life. But now the culture has changed. When people talk to their ministers or carers today, their cry is often not, I know what I'm supposed to do, I just can't do it. But with the confusion of voices I hear in the world today, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. People be can be People can be quite unsure about what constitutes the shape of a life that matters, about what it means to live a life that has moral substance. To suspend the categories of right and wrong would do nothing but exacerbate the situation. When we are inundated with information overload that we know contains both truth and fake news, how do we find our way through the noise? As Christians, we are not meant to become judgmental moralists, but we can spend some time considering how scripture informs wisdom and ethics. We should seek to have the conversations that help people discern how grace is to be lived out. What does contemporary morality look like? Prayer ribbons on fences is one way to start to become visible about faith. Another is what some of us have been doing over past weeks by chalking the footprints. Another is leaving peace rocks. Sometimes I find rocks or pebbles that have been painted and decorated, or some that have simply had the word peace written on them. They are left on walks as an encouragement and a sign of blessing. Sometimes it can be hard to identify, 
What work can I do? How can I share a word that is encouraging and not simply moralistic? Especially when the world seems to have closed in, what can I do from lockdown? What good work can I participate in? Even at home I can sing. My friends David and Craig wanted to send a song they had written to be considered for the new supplement to the Church of Scotland's hymn book. In this digital world, they messaged me on Facebook Messenger to see if I could record a vocal track. They sent me a music karaoke style file to play on my iPad so I could listen through headphones while recording to my computer. I sent the track back to them and they built an accompaniment around the voice. Then they added the graphics. Here is the clip. Craig got the ball rolling, but he didn't try to do everything by himself, even in lockdown. Did I mention that David lives in Brisbane and Craig lives in Melbourne? We were only able to do this work together because we are learning how to do good work from home. We are trying to find new ways to bless people from the situation we find ourselves in. James encourages us to hold a magnifying glass to the ethics of everyday life. Doing good is okay in its own right. We do not need to do good simply to store up riches in heaven. We do not do good for personal gain. Indeed, doing good will often mean sacrifice. We do not do good to people in the expectation of changing them, but are called by God to follow the example of unconditional love. 
doing good is the right thing to do. It doesn't need to be complicated. Good works can start with a ribbon or a rock or a chalk mark. And these things can grow into movements that support Afghani refugees and break apart systems of racism and house the homeless. Big works start with small works. We can see blessings in the works. Blessing is the idea that we draw out the best in others, in ourselves and in life. In the exchanges of daily conversations, we can offer blessing. When we make peace in close and sometimes strained personal relationships, we can offer blessing. When we care for widows and orphans in their distress, we can enter into a life well worth living. We can seek to live in such gentle ways that we reap a harvest of righteousness. When we are hearers and doers who exhibit faith through works, we are praying while moving our feet. In gratitude for life and resources, we offer ourselves in your service. O God of generosity, may our lives and ways of living become part of your gift to the world. Amen. A reflection and prayer from the Christian Conference of Asia. It is clear that the outbreak of COVID-19 is a result of systematic practices and actions by which we exploit and destroy God's creation. The crisis has revealed the fragility of human life and the ultimate vulnerability of the entire cosmos. Confronted by the spread of the novel coronavirus, all Christian churches, related organisations and other faith communities in Asia wholeheartedly delivered prompt ecumenical responses to the pandemic by sharing emerging challenges and insights to minimise the impact of the COVID-19 crisis. While strengthening our collaborations and solidarity, we are envisaging the path towards a better future where safety and well-being are ensured for all. Witnessing the hope in God amidst anguish and anxiety inspires and encourages us to believe that God's creation will be restored. Let us pray. God, in faith and hope we come to you and confess our weakness and vulnerability. At this time of our fragility, fear and death, we come to you. Make us well and all will be well. Be our saviour and we will be safe. For us, you are our hope. We believe that you are our strength, you are our shield. In our helplessness, we trust that you are our refuge. In our vulnerability, you are our shelter. In the midst of darkness, you give us light and rays of hope. In our pain and suffering, you give us the ability to live in hope and the wisdom to overcome all difficulties. God of compassion, make us to be concerned for all those who are suffering due to the COVID-19 pandemic. God of hope, heal us, protect us and sustain us by your divine grace. Amen. A prayer from the Geneva Secretary of the World Methodist Council. God, creator of the world and all humankind, have mercy on us, the people from all nations of the world, 
We are all affected by COVID-19, yet the burdens are unequally shared. Some have, have access to vaccination and health care. Others are told they must wait. Some earn more money than ever. Others lose their last coin. Some find comfort in a caring environment. Others are far away from home, lonely, exploited and neglected. Jesus, wounded healer, we urgently need you. You are in solidarity with those who are most affected by the many negative consequences of COVID-19. You are sick, you are homeless, you are a stranger, you are exploited, you are dying. Your love is universal. We separate, we neglect, we forget. You unite. Your compassion embraces all creation. You remember everyone. Because of your sacrifice, there is life, life stronger than death. Holy Spirit, transforming and renewing power, teach us to interconnect with each other. Only when all are vaccinated is the pandemic over. And when all are fed and safe, we together will celebrate life in its abundance. Inspire us to share God's love so that the world will be full of mercy and joy. Empower us to be Christ's hands and feet to reach out to our neighbours and strangers. God, creator, healer, transformer, in you is hope for all the world. To you be the glory. Amen. <laughs>